Despite what you may have heard, no one was killed at Stonewall. But the Stonewall riots of 1969 are still a key event in LGBT plus history that is sometimes fantasized or exaggerated, or, more likely, isn't taught at all. So today, I'm here to answer a few questions about what happened at Stonewall. Starting with, of course, were people killed? No, no one was killed at Stonewall, and that's because it wasn't really a riot. It was more of an uprising or a rebellion. During the 1960s, sodomy was still a federal offense in 49 states, so very few establishments would welcome gay people at all, and those that did were routinely raided by police. For this reason, the Stonewall Inn was owned by the Mafia, who were able to charge exorbitant amounts for watered-down drinks at a sleazy dump of an establishment because the patrons were really paying for protection from the police. When police would raid these bars, they would force patrons to verify their sex and arrest any gay men who were dressed in full drag or gay women who weren't wearing at least three articles of feminine clothing. The bars were usually tipped off in advance, so most of these raids weren't surprises. However, in the early morning hours of June 28, 1969, Deputy Inspector Seymour Pine arrived at the Stonewall Inn and announced, Police! We're taking the place! Much to the surprise of the 205 patrons and employees inside. These people went from celebrating and enjoying themselves to being ordered to get in line and present identification. Police barred the doors, two male and two female patrons revealed themselves as undercover police officers, and the public morals squad waited outside. However, the raid did not go as planned. Patrons refused to be taken away to verify their sex or show their IDs, so the police threatened to arrest everyone and take them down to the station. A few patrons were released, but instead of leaving, they stayed outside to watch the events unfold. And soon a crowd of 100 to 150 people formed as patrons from other bars and residents from the surrounding Greenwich neighborhood gathered to observe the event. Those who had been kicked out of Stonewall used the audience to their advantage and mocked the police. As the Mafia who owned Stonewall and many Stonewall employees were loaded into police wagons, the crowd began to stir. And that brings us to the second question. Who threw the first brick? Many people attribute this shot glass heard around the world to gay liberation activist and drag queen Marsha P. Johnson. But she didn't even arrive on the scene until 2 in the morning. Other people claim that it was the Latina American gay liberation and transgender rights activist Sylvia Rivera who threw the first brick, but she herself denies it. The more commonly agreed upon account is that a currently unidentified butch lesbian woman tipped the scales. When she complained that her handcuffs were too tight, a police officer hit her over the head, so she started to fight back, eventually crying out for help. What are you all doing? Why are you just standing there? Why don't you guys do something? After this plea for help, the crowd went berserk. So while the legacies of Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera extend far beyond the events at Stonewall, neither one can claim that they threw the first brick. And the first brick might not have been the catalyst at all. Once the crowd erupted, they threw much more than bricks. Coins, beer cans, sticks, rocks, garbage, and garbage cans were all hurled at the building as the mob grew rowdier and the police became more violent. The tactical patrol force of the New York City Police Department arrived to aid the police trapped inside Stonewall. When they tried to clear the streets by marching slowly and pushing the crowd back, the mob refused to move and openly mocked the police by forming various kick lines and singing impromptu renditions of ta ra ra boom die. The massive crowd eventually overwhelmed the police, chasing them for blocks before finally dispersing around 4 a.m. Another common question is whether the gay rights movement was born at Stonewall that night. This description is unfair to groups like the Daughters of Belitis and the Mattachine Society, who staged a sip-in at a bar in New York City three years before the Stonewall Rebellion. Stonewall did directly lead to the creation of the Gay Liberation Movement, who planned marches in New York City, San Francisco, and Los Angeles on the first anniversary of the uprising. To this day, Pride celebrations around the country are held on the anniversary of the Stonewall Rebellion. Finally, some people wonder if the recent death of Judy Garland sparked the rebellion. Garland did pass away on June 22, 1969, and her funeral did take place the afternoon before the uprising, but eyewitness accounts claim that the events at Stonewall were completely spontaneous. In fact, 
The only publication at the time that associated the rebellion with her death was an article by conservative columnist Walter Troy Spencer, who was mocking the riots. By associating the rebellion with the death of a singer and actress, however friendly to the LGBT plus community she was, Spencer trivialized the event by claiming it was a one-time response to a recent tragedy and erased the mistreatment and discrimination that LGBT plus people had faced for thousands of years that actually led to the uprising. I hope now your picture of Stonewall is a little clearer. There will always be questions about history that we can never answer, but by trying our best, we take ownership of the truest form of the events as they happened, in this case, at Stonewall. This truth will naturally help us celebrate the contributions that trans people and people of color made to the LGBT plus community and help us combat transphobia and racism, which still plague the community today. So I encourage you to keep asking questions and studying history to its fullest. By looking back at our history and learning from our mistakes, we can grow into better people and look forward to a better, brighter future. Thanks.